Hey, welcome everybody to your very special tutorial. We're going to be talking about MongoDB and Node.js, and we're going to start from nothing and build a pretty sweet application. So I'm pretty stoked. I think this is going to be cool because I'm not assuming any prior knowledge, and by the end, you'll have a lot of different pieces in your portfolio, so it's going to be fun. Let's get started. But first, a message from our sponsor. Thank you for sponsoring. Honey Badger, the tool of choice for uptime monitoring and error notification. It's the developer's secret weapon. You can easily pull Honey Badger into your project, allowing you to start fixing issues before customers even get the chance to report them. With full support for major programming languages and uptime monitoring for all platforms. Whether it be for exception monitoring, uptime issues, or background jobs, Honey Badger can easily notify you through chat systems such as Slack. Flexible pricing and free for non-commercial open source projects so you can get started right away. Link in the description. So what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be creating a sweet application similar to this one right here. You probably look at it and think, hmm, wow, what is it? Well, you can see it gives us this empty array. It looks just like two square brackets and normally you would have data inside of this. So it doesn't really look like it's doing much but behind the scenes, a lot is going on. For one, we have this application deployed on Amazon Web Services, and it's actually getting user data from a database. It just so happens that there aren't any users, so it's just giving us an empty array. But if you look at the URL, it says API forward slash users, and it's getting that information. So why is there nothing there? Well, there's no users to be gotten from the database. So the next logical thing is you might make a way to create new users. And all these different things you might want to do can be described in an acronym, CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. You might want to create users. You might want to update users, or I forgot the R. You might want to read users, which is what we're doing right now. We're reading all the users, there just isn't any. You might want to update a particular user, and you might want to delete a user. So that's the, the basis of most applications, and that's what we're going to be tackling today. We want to start building out that, that CRUD capability inside of MongoDB and Node.js. Now, one thing you need to understand is that you can build what's known as an API, which allows you to do these things, but you're not going to get a beautiful visual application. You're just gonna get arrays and data strings, all this stuff show up on the screen. But you can also then use this API to build out a very visual application with click and all clicking and typing and all that. We're gonna be focusing primarily on the API aspect of it because that is the most important. And once you understand that information, you can then use it to build other stuff. So we're gonna to try to replicate this and then build upon it. So let's take a look at what this code might look like. So when we ask to get all the users, we are making a get request. And the web address we're using is forward slash API forward slash users. That's what shows up in the top address bar. So if I scroll back to the web page, you can see forward slash API forward slash users. So this method in our code is being hit. What is this doing? Well, first thing, we're gonna connect to MongoDB and we're gonna get a collection of all of the users and then we're gonna send those documents to the client, which would be us, the web browser, trying to get that information. So this is what we're gonna start with, and we're gonna to try to recreate this information from scratch. Very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download Node if you have not done this already. Once it's downloaded and installed, you should be able to go in a terminal and type in, man, it's tiny, let me zoom in a little bit. First, we're gonna make this look cooler. All right, there we go. Nice and green, clear the screen and you should be able to say NPM. And when you do this, you should get some junk pop up on the screen, which means everything is installed and ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to a folder just to put all of our code. So I'm on Mac. You can definitely do this on Windows, but it might be easier if you're on Mac. So if you wanna follow along, you can either get a Mac, which if you don't have one, you probably don't wanna go buy one because they're like a quadrillion dollars, or you can download Git. GIT, and that'll give you a, a shell-like experience, a terminal-like experience where you can use some of the same commands. So for example, mcdir, and then just give a name such as node mongo. And we can change into that, uh, change directory into that node mongo. And then once we're in that directory, we can say npm init 
hyphen hyphen yes, which will answer yes to one of the prompts. That's gonna create our project. And now we just need to install some dependencies. So we're gonna say npm install. And what are we gonna install? We're gonna install something called Express to make a web server. And then we're gonna do the same thing with MongoDB. And then lastly, we're gonna install something called Nodemon, which will just make our development experience a little bit better because it'll basically refresh our server anytime we make changes. So we don't have to stop the server and restart it all the time. All right, so we got all those installed. Now what we need to do is we need to open this directory inside of a text editor. So I'm gonna open it in code, Visual Studio Code. And then we have this package.json, which defines our dependencies right here. So next we need to do is we need to do new file, app.js. This is where we're gonna put all of our code for our project. And then we can, exp uh, we can close out of the Explorer. We're not gonna need that. So now we just need to do some boilerplate code. So we're gonna say const express equals require express. So that'll get a reference to the express, which is one of our dependencies. And then we say const app as so. And now anything that we want to do with express, we can do through this app constant or variable that we created by saying app dot listen as an example that's an important method and this is how we listen for clients trying to contact the web server and we give a port so we'll just go with 3000 and then a comma and then a callback function which is going to execute when the web server is started so inside of the curly braces we can just console log something like started beautiful so that's like the basics, absolute basics, just to get the application running. And inside of the terminal, we'll just clear this out. We're just gonna say nodemon app.js. And when we do this, it says starting node app.js. It says started, which is actually what we put in the quotes here. So that appeared inside of that terminal there. And you should be able to go to this web page by using localhost colon 3000. So in the web browser, we're just gonna go localhost 3000, press enter, and it says cannot get. Well, no wonder it can't get. We didn't tell it how to get. So this computers are dumb. We have to be like super specific. All right, so it's trying to get something, but it's not working. The client by default is trying to get this, which is like the home page, and there is none. So we need to define that. So let's go back to our code. And what we do is we just say, app.get, and here we're defining what happens. So what are we gonna get? We're gonna get the home page, and then we need to do another callback function, which is going to be executed when a client visits this page. Now, if you're new, this syntax and stuff might be a lot, and I understand that, but you're just gonna have to get used to it. We don't have exactly enough time to go into all of it, maybe in a separate series or something someday. So just for now, type out what I typed, and inside of these parentheses, you're going to put REQ, R-E-S. REQ represents the request that I'm making to the server, and R-E-S represents the response. So using R-E-S, we can say R-E-S.send, and this is what we're gonna send back to the client. And we'll just put something like, I hear ya. So now, on our web server, it's going to automatically restart because we're using Nodemon, and inside of the browser, do a refresh, and we get that response, boom. So that's the basics of how to set up a web server and get information from the web server. Now we can start using MongoDB. So we're gonna be using a tool, MongoDB Atlas. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description for that. And we're just gonna try it for free. I'm just gonna sign in because I already have an account. And when you first sign in, you're going to wanna to create a cluster. And when you do that, it's gonna look something like this. So I have this cluster here and you can go in here and you can see the collections, which is just how we store data inside of MongoDB. And we have a bunch of different users with information. So what I'll do is I'll actually close out this cluster and show you the process of starting a new one. And it should be grand old time. So I'm shutting down my cluster. I'm deleting all my data. Don't do this in production, just as a warning. It's bad. In the meantime, let's go back to our code and edit that a little bit more. So we're gonna make another method here. We're gonna say app.get, but this time we're gonna use a different path. So instead of just a forward slash, we're gonna use a forward slash API, forward slash users. If you're working with some other data, you can call it whatever you want, that's up to you. And then same thing, we're gonna do a callback function. 
and that's going to look like this and it's also going to have REQ and RES. And just to test it out, we'll say res.send and we'll just say users. All right, let's check this out in the web browser, see if it works. Over in the browser, we can append API forward slash users and it says users. So that endpoint is working and now we need to figure out how to connect to MongoDB. So I'm gonna create a cluster and show you guys that process. Oh, it looks like they've changed it since last time. We're gonna go with free, obviously. I'm gonna spend no money. All right, cluster name, you can call it whatever. I'm only gonna go with my cluster, which is what I had last time. And we're gonna create that cluster, which will probably take some time, but it shouldn't take too long, maybe a minute or two or three or 10. Now, in the meantime, there's a couple things I wanna talk about. If you're brand new to MongoDB, it's probably gonna pop up. And that is database access. And you have to create a user here. So you can add a new user, and in this situation, you can use an admin, which is like full privileges, or write and read access, which is probably more recommended. And this person is going to be used to connect to your database. So set that up. You can see I have one set up here, Caleb Curry, and I'm doing exactly what I told you guys not to do. But you can use read and write to access the database. And then you also wanna configure the network access. And in here, you, uh, you can add an IP address and you can whitelist your IP so you can access your database because this is a, a cloud server. So you're basically gonna make a connection each time you want to talk to this database and you can use your, your IP address as a way to prevent other people from accessing your database. So you can select add current IP address or you can do a catch all with 0.0.0.0, .0, .0 forward slash zero. So I think if you delete this, that they should give you that option, allow access from anywhere. And this is not recommended for production. In fact, you should probably just do current IP address, but there's one concern and that is if you end up deploying your, your application to AWS or some other service or just your, your IP address changes, then you need to make sure that you add those IP addresses in this list, in the whitelist. Otherwise, your application is just not gonna work and you might have a really hard time figuring out what the problem is. And you try to change all your code when in reality the database is just rejecting your access. So since I travel and I also deploy to different things, I'm just gonna do access from anywhere. But again, don't do that in production. All right, so we got our database access, we got our network access, and it looks like our cluster is finally deployed. So we can hit this connect button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect through your application and we're gonna be using Node.js. So you're gonna get the full driver example and we're gonna take all of this code and copy it. So we'll start by pasting it here, but then we're gonna end up moving some stuff around. But just to get it all in our app, we'll get it here. Let's zoom out just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take all of this stuff cut that and we're gonna bring that up to the very top. I'm gonna to put it right after this first line, so right here. Now this password here, that is actually going to need to match with your password for the user you created with MongoDB. So that is over here in database access. This user, whatever password you gave them, if you already forget, just add the user again and make sure you write down the password. So go ahead and put your super secure password in right there don't tell anybody and later on you can learn better strategies of putting your passwords uh, so they're not in plain text. I can only cover so much in one video. So I'm gonna hard code that right there but that's not recommended for production either. Okay, next up, we're gonna go down here. Now we're gonna have to do some code to work with this data. So what we need to do is we need to say collection.find.toArray and then this is gonna take a callback function so what we need to do is we need to first create a parameter error if there's an error. So if there's an error, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw the error. We're not gonna do too much error and handling here, but assuming there is no error, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, response, send, and we're going to send the documents, which are actually gonna be another parameter there. So documents, this should work. Um, it's gonna be empty because there is no documents, but we'll just see what happens. Localhost 3000 API users, refresh, 
and you can see we get an empty array. Ooh. Next up, we need to update our code so that we're actually working with the users collection. And instead of getting this from devices, we're gonna get this from users. And now it makes sense to create code so that we can create users in our application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say app.post, and this time we are going to say forward slash API forward slash users. Same address, it's just a different method of reaching it. And we're also gonna have a callback function for this. So request and response, and then here's our code for creating a new user. We're going to work with that same collection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this line of code and paste that down here so we get the same reference. And then what we can do is we can say collection.insert1 and this allows us to insert one piece of data into the database. Now this is gonna take some arguments here. The first is what data to add into the database. So that's actually, that's gonna be sent in the body. So we're gonna say request.body and then again, we're gonna have a callback function and this is going to have a potential error and also the result. And we can check for that error if error throw it. Otherwise, what are we going to do? We're going to give some kind of confirmation. So we'll say res.send and we're just going to send the result dot inserted ID. I forgot an essential line right here. <laughs> Let me type all this out real quick. And then what I want to do is I want to take all this code and paste that. And then at the end of this here, I just want to say client.close, and there we go. So you can test this API using a tool called Postman. So you can get it at postman.com. It'll look something like this. And then what you do is in the web address here, you say post, change the information just a little bit. So we're just gonna go to localhost 3000 API forward slash users. And then for the body, we are going to Hey, looks like we already have some information in there for us. So, so make sure you have the same settings here. I got raw, JSON, and then I hit send. All right, so this time we get a, an issue uh, where we did not get a response. So in the terminal, you can see some issues, cannot read property ID of undefined. And this is a common issue and I'm gonna teach you how to fix this. In our code near the top, you can just add after app, app.use, and in here put express.json, beautiful. All right, make sure your server restarted if you feel the need to, and then let's try this again. Yes, so we got an ID here, and now let's go try to get the data from the, da the server and see what we get. And it seems to have worked. Now if at any point you get any issues, maybe just not working, um, you can always go to your server and hit RS to restart. You can also go into MongoDB and selecting under your cluster collections to take a look at this data. You can see we have test is the database and then users is the collection and we have one document in here and you can go in and expand this data to look at it. So that is the introduction. It's actually quite a lot, so many different things just to make this stuff work. But the next logical thing is to do a put and a delete. The first one is used to update particular documents and the next delete is used to remove documents. You can also use a get to get a particular user. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to code for how to do all these, but I'm not gonna cover everything in this video. If you want a more in-depth thing in the future, maybe we can do a series on it. But for now, that's all I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and be sure to subscribe.